Hello, this is teacher Alex from Phuket Pulse. Welcome to the next GED Life Science screencast on genetics and heredity. The topic of this lesson is DNA from nucleotides to chromosomes. If you find this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below. It allows us to help more people like you. All right, let's have an overview first. We will talk about the topic's vocabulary and the definitions in general. We will talk about and learn what DNA is. We will talk about what DNA is made of. We will talk about the term chromosomes and what they are and the functions of chromosomes. So first of all, since this is our first lesson on the major topic genetics and heredity, let's have a look what these two terms actually mean. Genetics is the study of heredity, or how the characteristics of living things are transmitted or passed on from one generation to the next. And that is what heredity means as well. It is the passing on of genetic factors from parents to offspring, or from one generation to the next. Now, so if we think about these two dogs, white and black, they might produce as an offspring such a Dalmatina. Now, to our topic. I am sure everybody of you has heard of the term before, or the acronym DNA. But the question is, what does DNA actually stand for? Anybody an idea? All right, let's have a look at it. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And what that is, we will talk about now. So DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid, first a more general and easy definition, is a long molecule that contains our unique genetic code. Like a recipe book, it holds the instructions for making all the proteins in our body. A bit more difficult definition, it is a self-replicating molecule composed of two chains that coil around each other to form a double helix carrying the genetic instructions for the development, functioning, growth and reproduction of all known organisms and many viruses. Now, so here in this picture we see the two chains of the DNA molecule that coil around each other and this type of coil is called an alpha helix. We can see that it's the DNA molecule is made out of two strands that are, or some molecules, connected in the middle. We see they have uh, the two strands have this backbone here, and what all this is, we will have a look at now. So, what is DNA made of? DNA is made of the basic units, which are so-called nucleotides. We can think of them as the alphabet of the DNA. Such a nucleotide is made of three parts. It is made out of a phosphate group, which we see up here. It contains a deoxyribose, which is a five-ring sugar that is missing an oxygen, deoxy, and the five-ring sugar is called ribose. And then we have an organic base or a nitrogen base that is attached to these uh, two parts, specifically attached to the deoxyribose, and this organic base can vary. We have four different organic bases, which we see here, the four different possibilities. These are the four letters of the DNA alphabet. Yes, you have heard correctly, the DNA alphabet only has four letters. So these nitrogenous bases, the four, which are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine, form base pairs when we have or double strand. And what is very important to know and to remember is that only and always two specific bases pair together. Adenine A pairs with thymine only, T, whereas guanine only pairs up with cytosine. So here we see an example, our double strand, the backbone of the DNA built by the ribose and 
the phosphate group linked together the nucleotides and the second strand and the first strand held together by the base pairs and the base pairs they are held together by so-called hydrogen bonds which are not covalent bonds which are weaker bonds but in the sum it is quite strong and is able to hold our DNA the double strand together so next we can talk about genes what are genes a gene is a specific sequence of nucleotides in the DNA that codes for a protein or controls the function of other genetic material. The order or sequence of the bases determines what biological instructions are contained in a strand of DNA. And for example, the sequence that we see here, T A A C T G C A G G T. That sequence contains a specific information and might contain the instruction for the protein that's responsible for our blue eyes. While a slightly different version of that same code, oh, I exchanged the C with a G, might instruct for a protein that's responsible for brown eyes. So here the sequence may be responsible for our protein leading to blue eyes. Such a sequence that codes for a protein we call a gene. And so we see in our DNA we have our genetic instructions. So some fun fact about the DNA. The complete DNA instruction book or the DNA that we have in a single cell or the genome of a human contains about 3 billion bases. That's a 3 with 9 zeros. And that equals about 20,000 genes. And these sit on 23 pairs of chromosomes. So we already have talked about what DNA is, what nucleotides are, what DNA is made of, and now we know what genes are but we still don't know what chromosomes are. This is what will come next. What are chromosomes? So I'm sure every one of you or most of you have seen such a picture before of this X-shaped huge molecule. And yes, that is a chromosome, but what is it? Now a chromosome is made of protein and a single molecule of DNA. So it's a mix of protein and DNA. It's located in the nucleus of animal and plant cells and the chromosomes since it is DNA is passed from parents to offspring and from one cell to another if a cell is replicating DNA contains the specific instructions that make each type of living creature unique or DNA humans have 23 different chromosomes a total of 46 two sets in each of our cells so what do chromosomes really look like? And what does the term mean? The term chromosome comes from the Greek words of color, which is chroma, and body, soma, chromo, so. So scientists gave this name to this uh, molecule complex of DNA and proteins because chromosomes can be stained very well. That means they can be colored by dyes under the microscope, for example. And this is what we see here. This is a real picture of cells under the microscope. And that dark purple stuff that we see here is our DNA. And in some cells, it looks differently. In this cell, for example. And what we can see here, these are the actual chromosomes, these X-like structures what we have seen in the last the previous slide what we recognize here that not every cell has these specific distinct structures of chromosomes present why that is we will learn in a bit so let's first talk about what chromosomes do what they are 
So chromosomes are made of DNA, what we already said, and proteins. And what we can see here is that DNA is tightly wrapped around proteins, so-called histones. Together, they form a nucleosome. And that has to be done since DNA on its own would simply be too long to fit into the nucleus of a cell. Again, we have in a single cell 46 chromosomes and each single one contains a very, very long strand of DNA. So somehow we have to pack our DNA up, organize it. And that's what a chromosome is basically. So the chromosome in its X shape form is only visible when a cell divides. That means DNA has to be moved about in the cell, has to be moved from one side to another, since both cells that will come out of the dividing cell need DNA. Every cell needs DNA. So that means when our cell divides, DNA needs to move around. And what do we do when we move stuff? Well, we usually pack it up tightly. So that it's more organized and easier to move. And the cell does the same thing with the DNA. So a chromosome is basically very, very tightly packed DNA, condensed as much as possible. When that is done, we get our typical X-shaped form, which can be moved safely around the cell. This packing up, step by step, we see here. Here another example, the DNA, specific region that codes for a protein, a gene, wrapped around our histone proteins, forming a nucleosome. These nucleosomes then coiling up even more, coiling up more, forming supercoils, and in the end it coils up to our chromosome, which is found in the nucleus of a cell. So here again, going back to our real picture from under a microscope, we can see the chromosomes here and the cell is actually dividing. We can see chromosomes are splitting up here. One, move, one cell moves to one side, the other to the other. These cells, in these cells, the DNA is elongated. It's not about to divide, so it needs to be accessible. So the genes can be read and proteins can be made. So our DNA is elongated and we do not see the typical X-shaped form of chromosomes. So another fun fact, no, I said already DNA is very long. In a single cell of a human, if we take all the DNA molecules and we unwind them and place them end to end, they would stretch about two meters. So that means in a single cell of your body, you have about two meters of DNA. And during cell division, this amount of DNA has to be handled. So it needs to be packed up very well, but it can be moved around. So that's it about DNA, nucleotides, genes, and chromosomes so far. This was an introduction to genetics and heredity. So let's summarize what we have learned. We have learned that DNA contains the genetic information of an organism. We've learned that DNA is made of two connected chains of nucleotides. A nucleotide contains one of four nitrogen bases, A, G, C, or T. Bases of opposing strands pair up in defined patterns, where A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. Genes are sequences of DNA that contain information for a protein. Chromosomes are molecules made up of a large molecule of DNA and wrapped around our histone proteins. And chromosomes are a condensed form of DNA that is needed during cell division when DNA has to be moved. All right, that's all from me, teacher Alex from Phuket Pulse. And thank you for watching this video. I hope I see you next time. Have a good day.